What's up, Replay viewers? Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for the hearts. We got 125k. 200's got to be the next obvious goal. What's up, Royal? What's up, Kiff? What's up, Diversified? How's it going? What's up, Joe? Glad you can join. Thanks for the invite. Randy, what's up? Choo choo. Choo choo. What's up, Trav? So this is what we're talking about tonight. Product, business, customer, life cycle. All of these things are the same. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to turn the new invites. Thank you for the hearts. I was telling everyone else we're at 125. 200k is the next level. What's up, Jake Scape? Jake Scape. Hmm. Cool name. Very good. So, 200 hearts is where we're going. And uh, this is what we're talking about tonight. This is what we're talking about tonight. So, what's up, Mr. Neal? <sighs> Wanted to... Good evening, by the way. Matt LaMarche here with LaMarche Landscaping. Hope you guys are doing well. Ready for the weekend. I know a lot of you guys are going to be hustling and grinding. But for those of you that aren't, enjoy the time off. So, I talked a little bit about this two weeks ago, I think. Uh, my grandfather and I went to lunch and we are talking about the life cycle of products, services, customers, business, all of it's the same. You could apply this theory to all of it and it's exactly the same. Doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter what we're talking about. Super delightful. When we look at this product life cycle, there are four, five stages generally. Number one, introduction. Number two, growth. Number three, maturity. And then number four, decline. <laughs> Oh, Macan, Macan, very nice. So, introduction, you got the you got the introduction of the business, the launch, whatever you want to call that. The growth is when you start to see the numbers increase, sales increase, the number of employees increase. You again, you can apply these all to a product, a service, a business, um, even a customer. So, you have your introduction for your customer. They get introduced to the business. They start to trust you more, therefore there's growth. They start trusting you with more than just maintenance. Maturity is when you've kind of tapped out with them. In other words, there is no more to be had. And then they eventually begin to decline. Either they they no longer use you for uh, a specific service or all of the services that you offer. Um, there's always that decline. Now, the next thing that we're going to kind of incorporate into that, and we got to kind of draw it out because no one has this form on here. So... I'm going to draw it for you guys along here. So follow along with me on the iPad here. Same bell curve, right? The only difference is right about here, there's a critical point in which you must innovate your product, change the service, innovate the service, change the customer, or change the business altogether. And then what ends up happening is, right, and I'm going to try and draw not through the phone, but just straight on the iPad, you have your next wave of business or your innovation. That's where your your this is a critical point right here this is where your next business comes this is called a pivot right here also what's up quinn quinn low 34 thanks for sharing thanks for all the hearts so this point right here is a pivot it's normally where you've owned a lawn care business and you go yeah i really want to just do landscaping and then you go okay we're going to do landscaping if you're travis you get here after several occasions and then you end up going into machines right so all of these x's in here and we can color them differently right there and right there these are critical points in your business or pivot points where you figured something out you've matured the business to a point where it kind of plateaus and then you innovate or you change or you add a service or whatever so if we do away with all this essentially what your business normally would look like is just this right it's kind of hard to see there isn't it what you're trying to do is anticipate this and keep this from happening <laughs> at all you want to find this if your dream is to mow grass forever and ever you just want this to stay like that you you want it to maintain customers what's difficult about that though is that people move they sell their home uh, if they're a landlord they they sell it for investment reasons they buy another one you may get some of that crisscrossing business but there's always going to be turnover and you need to expect that you need to plan for that and so that's why this theory is important for your business no matter where you are in your business you always need to have that leverage point that pivot point at which you take it to the next level so if we're going this to matt lamarche 
we would say that green here is Lamarche landscaping. Well, you can't really see that, can you? We're going to say that this is Lamarche landscaping year to date. And so we launched a year ago, maybe early in the May, late April. That is terrible. Can we see that? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, April or May, somewhere in here, the second line, when we experienced growth and maturity was probably through the summer. And then probably where we are about right now is in the late fall, early winter on this fourth line. But what I've already done, for those of you that know me or that have been following along for some time, when I got about here, about midway through the summer, I sort of gone, hmm, aeration's pretty sweet. I like just aeration. So what we're going to do is we're going to start another company called Atlanta Aeration. And we're going to take that to the next level, right? So we're still going to have this. But what we ultimately are going to have to do is plateau here. And there is a point where we're only going to have so many maintenance customers we can do. And Atlanta Aeration is going to take on more business for us. It's going to produce higher numbers. But ultimately, that's what your business should be doing. Whether, again, this is a product or a customer, even if you apply this to all your customers. Let's say, again, you've got the customer that comes in. And then you sell them on lawn maintenance in here. And then you may get some extra pine straw, mulch, flowers, planting, whatever, but at some point they're going to plateau, right? There's only so much you, you can do on a specific property, but then again, at some point, they're going to start to dive off. So, the last kind of piece of this, <laughs> gotta replay, Jay, gotta replay. The next piece of this is for customers. So let's say this is a collective of customers for your business, and you get to this point, and let's do that in a different color. and you get to this point, you need to expect that the green here, your next business, your pivot move, whatever you want to call this next green arc, whenever you begin to pivot in here, all of this right here is only going to be potentially, and this is high by the way, 20% of this original curve. So in other words, 80-20 we talk about a lot. What's up, John? This percentage right here is 100%. If you can convert 20% of those customers to this right here, this curve, the green curve, that's huge. That's enormous, in fact. That's like the most, most large organizations would ever be able to accomplish. So if you can get this 20% up here out of this original business, out of this original product, out of this original service, you are doing quite well. So um, that's about it. That's really all I wanted to talk about because a lot of people don't know um, or don't think about it. And for me, I've constant, constantly been thinking about it because lawn maintenance is just not where I want to be five years from now, 10 years from now. And look, you have to figure yourself out and you have to figure out what you like and what you don't like. You have to figure out what makes sense for your family, for your income. I just know that there is a point. Thanks, Travis. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thanks, Joe. You have to figure yourself out, have the self-awareness to understand where you want to go, ultimately where you want to be. But if you have those pivot points, and again, you may have one every six months, you may have one every 30 days, I think the real difference is understanding you, understanding your long-term goals, also your short-term goals, to figure out which one of those pivot points is ultimately going to put you in a position where you can then accomplish your long-term unicorn dream, vision, whatever it is. Thanks for the hearts, Randy. I think that's Randy. Purple hearts there. Gutter cleaning. Gutter cleaning. <laughs> Yeah, what's my job? What your job? Um, hmm. It's a little higher education than that. We got to figure something out about that. Mac 115, what's up? So, any questions about that theory? When is it too late to pivot? Um, there's not really a bad time to pivot. I like to anticipate the next move. So, in other words, if if we're looking at business, especially in a seasonal business like we have in lawn care and landscaping, if we were to split this thing into four seasons, and let's just say that this is one customer or all of your a collective of all your customers, this would be January through March. This would be April through June, and then July through August ish. I mean, in the in the boat world, um, this used to be January through July fourth, and then the rest of the year just tanked off. 
Um, on a scale of one to ten, yeah, I'm I'm at about a nine right now with current business. Um, but you know, for me again, it's all about the long term play. So if we were going to look at that, let's erase that. Here's where the start of the business was. Here's where we're going. I think we've got realistically ten years, give or take, to get from here to here. And if we're in year one, um, we're a little ahead numbers wise and learning, I would say that we're there. But as far as having nine years left in the plan, you know, we may have to extend this out to like 11 years. Um, and again, not because of the results we got this year, but more about understanding the timeline for me, but also what's realistic. Um, I take a little bit different approach than most guys in this business. And I'm going to wrap it up in about five minutes here. So if you have any questions, let's go ahead and get those in here. Um, I don't normally take on debt. Now, I finance my lawnmower, but that's because it's free money at 0% for four years. It just makes sense. So even if I pay more on it and pay it off a little early, there's no penalty for that. That's just smart economics. Now, if you're rushing out to buy a mower that you can't afford you know, to own, number one, maintain, number two, and pay off in the first season, in my opinion, that's a bad move. Um, that's just my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with me. That's okay. But um, in my opinion, you should be able to buy your first machine used or new uh, in the first year cash money. And if you can't, <laughs> that's right, Kiff. Hopefully they pull out a win this weekend. Um, uh, hopefully, um, if in that first year you can afford to buy your equipment and own it, then um, the next three years when you would be paying interest on it, or even if it is 0%, uh, at least you're then kind of ahead of it. And, you know, some of these machines are just really hard to, um, you're, you're just really hard on machines. If you're doing 10, 12, 20 lawns a day, I mean, that's that's pretty rough. So, um, and Bobcats are the same thing. Trucks are the same thing. You know, you need to have, we tried to build in about a 10% margin just for equipment failure and replacement this year. So, uh, to go back, Randy, I think that was your question. Scale of 1 to 10, I'm, I'm a 9, I think for this first year business. But what I learned in this first year, and if I had to, to leave that one percentage point or that one point on the scale, um, I think it would just be a matter of understanding that uh, where I wanna go in the future is, um, no, I agree, is a lot bigger and better. And I think we could have taken a different path, just done landscaping installs without doing the maintenance. The maintenance was nice to have um, income, regular income, reoccurring income coming in, but I wish we could have turned a lot more of our focus towards landscaping projects, machine work, installs, that type of stuff. Um, and that's that one that I would leave on the, on the table. So anyway, that's it um, for tonight. I was going to do like 15, 18 minutes, something like that. So hopefully that was helpful. How's the waiting for aeration? Uh, it's not, <laughs> not here at least. The nice thing about Georgia is that we have six months of aeration. So spring, uh, you can pretty much do April, May, June. Fall, you can do like the last two weeks of August, September through the end of November-ish. So uh, what, September, October, November. So three months in the spring with all the warm season turf, soggy Bermuda, zoysias, uh, St. Augustine, stuff like that. And then uh, in the fall with your fescues and rise and all that type of stuff. So, uh, yeah. But that's the plan. So, the next six months, five months now, November, December, January, March, and April will... November, December, January, February, and March will all be for setting up Atlanta Aeration, SEO maximization, optimization, and um, uh, having the website, e-commerce all in place. What's up, Birches? and uh, everything in place, the equipment in place, so that on April 1st, we start asking for business and then just start hammering numbers out. So that's the plan. We're gonna cut, we're gonna have to cut back on maintenance some, um, but I anticipated that already, and um, it's just part of the deal, but it's part of the pivot. And I understand that in maintenance, there's, there's a ceiling. That's exactly right, diversified. Uh, there's a ceiling on how much you can make per hour, and I think we're just about there. Um, we'll know when I go up on my prices again because a lot of my customers stayed around. But, you know, if you are consistent and you communicate uh, very clearly with your customers and set expectations, you can charge more. You can just charge more. So, for all of you that are new, Matt LaMarche, LaMarche Landscaping, thank you for the hearts, thank you for the invites. Um, what else? Did I miss anything on that? Landscaper needed. 
Kayla from the Valley. All right. Kayla, where are you from? Uh, yes, definitely less weekly for sure. Probably about the same bi-weekly, but um, yeah, just a little. The weekly stuff is just exhausting, and you can't go on vacation. It makes it more difficult at least. Um, yeah. Gotcha. Whereabouts in Georgia? Team with heavy shorts on. Um, yeah, they are polos. Um, okay. Well, I'm in Sandy Springs, Kayla. So we do have the Nike dry fit polos during the summer. They're a lifesaver. Uh, we do have um, uh, like a heavy, almost like a, what's the name of that company? Um, it starts with a D. I can't remember it. Dickies. There it is. Um, almost like Dickies heavy duty pants, you know, for weed whackers and <laughs> chainsaws and everything else. Obviously, that's not going to stop a chainsaw, but you get the idea. Um, just something heavy duty that wears well. Um, but yeah, the polos are awesome. They save uh, save you during the heat for sure. I mean, it didn't get as hot as it normally does here, but there were a couple days in the 90s that it was brutal. So anyway, if that's all for tonight, I'm going to let you guys get into your weekend. It's 8 o'clock on a Friday. Caleb, I know you're not on here yet, but when you watch this... <laughs> You have to. You have to. So when can you come? Uh, where in Atlanta? I'm in Sandy Springs, Dunwoody area, so north of Atlanta. Um, yeah, no, I, Randy, you're right. Pro provided you have enough income to justify it, nice polos, you know, people like to see. There's a difference. How about that? It's just like everything in your marketing. If it feels different, if it looks different, people assume you're different. Um, and when we show up for estimates, for work, for leaf pick, like it doesn't matter, it's all the same. Um, yeah, Columbia is good stuff. And uh, I think it kind of sets us apart. In addition, there's kind of two reasons for the, for the snap. Okay, very cool. Um, for the, uh, for the, the light lime green that we have. Uh, the color, obviously, I mean, if you look at this stuff, it's, it stands out, right? But then... Um, Absolutely, but then you can also see uh, M. LaMarche, actually, if someone throws it up there. Um, you can also see us from a mile away. So you see the trailer sitting there, but then you see us working, you know, up in the yard or whatever. Because um, most of the properties in this area are pretty good size. So, um, anyway, that's it, though, I think. For <laughs> sure. That's right. No, M. Lamarsh, uh, M. L. A. M. A. R. S. H. M. Lamarsh. So take landscaping away, add an M to the front. You got it. Can we get the pause button down? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It just depends on the work. I think it depends on the work you're doing. And a lot of people expect you to show up in a t-shirt and jeans, or shorts. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If if that's all you got, if that's all you can afford, to me, let the work speak for itself. And then, you know, if you got the extra cash to throw around to kind of provide a little more professional image than you do so. Just like your website. Just like your website. All right, guys, gals, thanks so much. Have a great weekend. We will talk to you soon. Exactly, perceived value, 100%. 100%. You do the same, Joe. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the shares. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you later.